Welcome to Job Club. We are so excited that you joined us. Uh, it's rainy in Lexington, so I don't know about where you're um, catching us today, but hopefully you're getting some rain for the uh, this time of the year. One of the reasons that we uh, tell our agenda at each and every job club is that we know there are first timers, first time people that are attending. So we want you to know a little bit about what to expect. Um, we will have success stories, those that have um, um, benefited in some way during the last two weeks in their job search. We have a main speaker. We're so excited about that today. You're going to learn so much as usual. And we are going to be sharing some active job leads at the conclusion of the presentation. We'll do partner updates as well as tell you what is next time at Job Club. So to, to paraphrase, our mission is to provide a positive environment for job seekers to network and learn best practices for the job search. We meet on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month, and you can find the schedule of topics at www.ukalumni.net slash job club. So we'll want you to check that out. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, in a second. We have a wonderful team that um, facilitate job club. It takes all of us to do that. I'm Diana Doggett. I am the extension specialist. Caroline Francis is Director of Alumni Career Services at UK Alumni Association. Amanda, Amanda Shagney is the Associate Director of Alumni Career Services. Nicole Waite is our Employment Specialist at UK STEPS Temporary Employment. Suzanne Smith and Sonny Saylor are at Fayette County Extension helping us to produce this, this session. And Queen Sullivan, Christy Kaufman, and Lindsay Cahill are with UK Alumni Association. So you can see there are quite a few of us that um, are presenting today um, in Job Club. We want to remind you that Job Club is currently hosted in a hybrid format. That means we're in person. We're here at the Fayette County Extension Office. We want to welcome everyone that has joined us in person. We also are available on Zoom webinar. And that means that we have a chat monitor, monitor red, moderator available. So you can use that chat, chat box to tell us where you're from. And we'd love for you to do that right now. Let us know where you are viewing or listening from today. Also, if you have questions throughout uh, the session where our speaker is uh, presenting, just go ahead and put those questions in the chat box and we will uh, be able to answer those. We also are available on Facebook Live. That means view only, no chat moderator or job lead newsletter. You could access our access our recordings of job club sessions at that same website. So we want to remind you that we do record our sessions, each and every one of them. And if there's a particular topic that you would like to um, uh, review or view for the first time, be sure and look at that archive of sessions on our website. And that leads me to the free Job Club resource packet that is available on the website, www.ukalumni.net slash job club. And those resor free resources might be just the thing you need in the interim before we're meeting or, or for a specific issue or topic. Um, you can see the list of all that's included in that resource packet. And uh, we would just invite you to, to just, you know, preview it, look at it, and uh, give us some feedback on what you think of the, the packet. We do want you to for a very, very seriously consider joining the Central Kentucky Job Club, sharing community on LinkedIn. Uh, we have uh, uh, several presentations on LinkedIn. Each and every speaker normally always emphasize the importance of LinkedIn if you're in your job search. So we'd like to invite you to join our LinkedIn because we'll be posting um, articles that we come across that might be beneficial to you, as well as job leads uh, during the two weeks that uh, between sessions. So make that a point today that that would be a success story if you have uh, joined LinkedIn, and we'd love to see you do that. We, 
employees, employers and recruiters are always welcome at Job Club. And uh, we give in-person employer guests the opportunity with, for a one-minute spotlight to share active job leads with the group later in the program. Um, watch your email later today for job leads that have been sent and shared with the Job Club team. Now, we always note that some employees are conducting a confidential job search. So let's please be respectful of privacy for the job search of others. And again, check out the job search related articles included in our job club reminder emails. We will be sending that email immediately around uh, one o'clock this afternoon. Typically you'll get that email newsletter with which will include those job leads. Now we want to welcome our first time attendees. Do we have anyone in the audience is here for the first time? Yes, we do. Well, we, we certainly want to welcome you. We are always, um, um, I, I dare say we're never without first time attendees. And that is just great because um, typically someone has shared Job Club with someone else or they, they've seen it in our, our, uh, our media. Um, I, you will receive, if you, and those of you on for online, if you would tell us if you're a first time attendee, we'd love to know that as well. You will receive a follow up survey later this afternoon, and this feedback will place you in our notification system for future programs. So scan the QR code um, on our screen or you can complete it now if you'd like. So we want, we, we're just thrilled that. Uh, when, when, when someone's here for the first time, it, it, we know we're doing, doing a good job. So we would like to know, uh, uh, anyone online or in our audience today, any successes that you have achieved during the past two weeks or month? If you have in the chat box, please go ahead and type those in. Success stories um, can mean different things to different people. I mentioned LinkedIn could be a success story that you you finally made your profile and you, you're, you're posted, you're on LinkedIn, that's a great success. Um, you may have updated your resume or perhaps you've uh, um, enlarged your network. You've reached out to someone who um, can, can probably lead you to the right people at the right time. So there's just a whole array of activities and processes uh, that, you, that you could possibly have done for success stories. And uh, I'm gonna have Sarah hand me that paper that's on top. We've got a success story for me to share today. And we're always, ex always excited about that. And, and we want to uh, remind you that when you do finally get the job, and we know you will, to write that up, give us a little statement so that we can share with our audience. And it's such a, a, a motivation for those that are currently seeking uh, a job. So I got this yesterday. Um, I noticed that you all wanted numbers for knowing when attendees got interview or jobs. I attended the virtual job club meetings a lot in 2020 and found a new job at UK in February of 2021. Had interviews with about four or five other companies during that time as well, but found the best fit for me at UK. Thanks for all you do. I shared the job club with friends and with all of our graduating interns. Best, Aaron Shea. So, Again, that was just a reminder that uh, even if this, if you forgot and didn't tell us about your success, we certainly want you to do that now so that we can make a record of that and again, share with others. So go ahead and uh, put those things in, in the, the chat box so others can see what you're doing and uh, we applaud you for your efforts. Now it's a privilege for me to introduce our speaker today. I know Sarah really well. Uh, Sarah and I were co-workers for um, about three years. And um, we, we were the team at the Fan County Extension Office in Family Consumer Sciences. And Sarah has moved on um, in her career. And we're just, uh, we're, we're so, so proud of her. She's currently employed through 
Hannah Resource Group as a talent acquisition consultant. Sarah is consulting with a financial startup company out of Louisville, Kentucky called DPL. Before coming to Hannah Resource Group, Sarah had experience in human resources from higher education, including Kentucky Community and Technical College System and the University of Kentucky. Sarah received her Bachelor of Science from Eastern Kentucky University in General Dietetics. She holds a Master of Arts in Education from Western Kentucky University in Adult Education and a Master of Science from the University of Louisville in Human Resource Organizational Development. Sarah recently became SHRM CP certified. In her free time, Sarah always enjoys spending time with her family, her dog Paisley, cooking, reading, and experiencing new places. And again, if there's ever an example of transferred skill, it is with Sarah because you heard her background, her educational background, her previous jobs, and look what she's doing now. So Sarah, welcome. I know you'll be telling them a lot more about what's happening with you. So let's all welcome Sarah. I think this is on. Is it on? Am I on? It's red. Do I need to click it? Oh, I got it. Okay. Whoa. Okay. I'm good. So as Diana said, my name is Sarah Talbot, and I probably am the definition of transferable skills with everything I have done um, in the last 15 years. And today, before I start, though, Diana really mentioned success stories, and um, I am a job club success story, and maybe a non-traditional way. So um, Diana and her team, Amanda, Caroline, asked me to sit on a panel back in February with other recruiters, and I reluctantly accepted. I didn't know if I really had anything to add and I was at a place where I didn't feel valued or appreciated and I networked while I was here and that's why it's so important to come in person if you can because you never know who you'll meet. I sat on a panel that day. I met somebody and we exchanged numbers to have coffee. She called me before we had coffee and said, I think I got a job for you where I work. We talked to my boss. A week later, I spoke with her boss. That same day, I spoke with the owner of the company, the chief operating officer, and now I'm blessed to be at Hannah Resource Group. So I'm your non-traditional panelist who sat at Job Club, came in person, and, and I'm so blessed and so thankful they asked me to speak that day. And if you are hesitant to come in person, I invite you to come in person. I invite you to be a part of this because you never know who you'll meet. And I'm the definition of that. So that is not the topic today, though. But the topic today is actually going to be interview boot camp. So with that being said, interviewing, has it changed? Sure, it has changed. Um, but with that being said, there's a lot of stuff that's still the same. And sometimes it's great to have a refresher and to go over some things. Interviewing has changed. We do have virtual interviews now, which we'll talk about. But we're going to talk about four main things today. We're going to talk about the pre-interview. So you've got the call for the interview. What's next? We're going to talk about being comfortable at interviews. A lot of times people get very anxious at interviews. We're going to talk about how to make it conversational. What's the easy way to do that? We're going to talk about interview questions and tough interview questions, how to answer them, because we all get those questions. Why are you looking for a job? Why are you leaving your employer? You haven't worked for two years. Why haven't you worked? And so we're going to talk about how to answer those questions. And we're also going to talk about what to do after the interview, what to do post interview. So we'll get started. So before the interview, The best thing I can tell you all, I've been doing interviews now with my transferable skills. I've probably been interviewing people for about 10 to 12 years. The best thing I can tell you is research the company and industry you have applied to work for. So you've gotten the call, you've gotten the interview, you got to prep, you got to get ready. You can't walk in there and not have a plan of action of what you're going to say. Researching the company is crucial before the interview. I cannot tell you all this. How many times I've sat in an interview and said, can you tell me about X company? What do you know about us? 
And that person sits there and has no idea where they have applied. I'm not lying to you all. That is something when you leave that room, people talk about. They talk about, you've applied for a job and you don't even know where you've applied. You don't even know basic facts. I'm not saying you have to know it all, but I'd be familiar. What kind of industry is it? What is their mission? What is their vision? I would know different things about that company because the minute you walk out of that room, if you don't know about that organization, the chances of you getting that job, regardless of your skills, are slim. You got to do your research. You got to know what the company is about. General knowledge about the company is crucial. Know where you have applied. I can't stress that enough. Know where you've applied. Know the organization. How many, how many companies do they have? How many locations are there? What kind of jobs do they offer? If you don't know that basic information, you walk out of that room, I promise you, people are sitting there like, this isn't going to work. This person isn't for us. Another thing to do before your interview is learn everything about the position, transferable skills. A lot of people after COVID are going around and they're making a change. Like Diana told you all, I have had a gamut of jobs. I have worked in community education. I have worked um, in talent acquisition. And now I work with a consulting group. And what transferable skills are about, come with all of those? I have them. Um, but I want to tell you about somebody who's close to me. My youngest brother went to school to be a teacher. Teacher. And I messaged him last week. He quit. He was a teacher for five years. It's stressful to be a teacher. I get it. He sells insur insurance now. He's an insurance agent. I said to him, hey, what transferable skills did you take from the classroom to be an, an insurance agent? And he said, well, that's a good question. Nobody's ever asked me that. And so this is what he told me. He told me some of those skills he took to be an insurance agent were the ability to multitask. Did he have to multitask in a classroom? Absolutely. Does he multitask now? Absolutely. Um, building relationships. He had to learn to build relationships in his school and his school district. And in insurance, that's more important than ever. So he took building relationships. He took organization, which he's not the most organized person. I hope he's not watching this. But um, he, he, you know, but he took whatever organization he got and he took that with him. Um, the ability to present ideas clearly and effectively and get his point across and to be able to be a team player. So my brother went from being a middle school history teacher to an insurance agent. To me and to you all, that's your proof. You can go from any job to another job. And there is some type of skill you have learned that you can take with you and market yourself. It may be a completely different career career field. You can market that. I came from community education. I came from extension. There are a whole lot of things I learned from extension that have made me the talent acquisition consultant I am now. And so all of those skills, if you sit down and take the time, you can find those skills to talk about in your interview to make you the best candidate. So really take time before your interview to discuss and to write down those transferable skills. Figure out what type of interview you will be participating in. It seems like common sense, right? It's not. It's really not. Are you doing it on the phone? Are you doing it in person? Are you doing it virtually? So figure out what type of interview you're doing and then go from there to get prepared. And we'll talk about preparing for different interviews a little bit later. Practice interview questions you may be asked so that you're comfortable. When I was on a job search, like everybody during COVID, I think everyone was like, hmm, could I do something else? Could I be somebody else? Can I do this? I started researching interview questions and I interview people. What's most asked? What, what are common questions? You all, I would have legal pads full of questions and full of answers because I wanted to be prepared. And so there's a method called the STARS method when you answer review questions. That's how everyone knows it as. But actually when I was Googling online, I found a method, it's called the Sarah method. And it is spelled exactly like my name without an H. And I thought we're past the STAR method. You're going to use the Sarah method for now on. So we're gonna talk about the Sarah method a little bit later. And then have questions prepared to ask at the end. It's a turn off sometimes if someone doesn't ask you a question at the end. You've went through, you've asked them, and then nothing. Do you have any questions for me? Um, no. You, you got to have one. So I always, when I was interviewing, I had a pr list of pre-questions I always ask people. So some of those questions you could ask at the end if you just want like a set to always be in there is, 
why is this a newly created position or is this a rehire if the person left can you tell me why they left how do you evaluate this person in three six nine twelve months what's the best way to do that what's your company culture like company culture is so crucial now after COVID that people just aren't taking any jobs so people really want to know where they're going to work and what kind of culture they're going to be in Diana mentioned that earlier with the success story this lady had tons of other interviews and offers UK was the best culture for her Hannah resource group right now is the best culture for me ask those type of questions be informed know where you're going and don't sit there and say um uh, even if your question is what is your hiring process what are the next steps have some questions prepared for the interviewer you and this is the most important thing too with having questions prepared excuse me you're interviewing with them but you're interviewing them they're interviewing you you're interviewing them you want to make sure that they're a right fit for you do they fit you culturally your values your ethics you want to make sure you're interviewing them as well and i think that's super important to remember so the night before so now we're nervous right like we made it we're here i gotta go to bed okay so review your notes so go over your notes remember review where are you interviewing what is the company what are the positions what do we sell what do we do what service do we provide um review the email from your interviewer so look at the time what time am i supposed to be there where is the location how long will it take me to get there we all sat in our houses for a long time i think we kind of forgot how to drive we kind of forgot what traffic was like like it's raining in Lexington this morning. I had to factor that in when I left my house this morning. So, you know, do a little Google search the night before. See how far it is if you're unfamiliar with it. You might be going to a town over. You may be going somewhere in your city, but know where you're going and plan that out the night before. Consider traffic, your interview attire. Do not run around the next morning trying to find clothes to wear. You will fail because those pants they're probably in the dryer and that shirt is wrinkled and your shoe well your dog took it so figure out where your clothes are have them laid out the night before i know this seems elementary but you can't imagine how many people show up like to interviews because they didn't google map where they're going because they didn't lay their clothes out so have your clothes laid out another thing too with clothes is dress for the part you're applying for so if I'm applying to be a forklift driver, probably not going to walk in in a full suit, right? I'm probably going to walk in in nice pants and a shirt. So you don't have to wear suits anymore unless the interview calls for a suit. Dress for the job you're applying for. Feel good about what you wear. Wear your favorite shirt. Wear your favorite shoes. But have it all laid out the night before. It's going to make your life a lot easier. And the most important thing, sleep. You can cram all night. You can read through, like I used to, my legal pads of questions I had answered. It doesn't matter if I don't go to bed and I don't get good sleep. So we all know the doctor says seven to nine hours. Some of us function on six. Some of us function on five. I don't know who you people are, but props to you. But get some sleep. Go to bed. Stop looking at your notes. Take a breather. It's time to move on. With that being said, too, the night before getting ready, also make sure you have important documents prepared. So if you want to have extra copies of your resume printed out, um, your portfolio, if you're going for a digital marketing job, you may have a portfolio. You may have something on a jump drive. Make, all, make sure all that stuff is ready and make sure that it works. So those are some tips to help us get ready the night before. Okay, you all. We have made it. We're there. We drove there. Lights, camera, action. It's time to go. We got to do this. We got to get this new job. Okay. So with that being said, you need to remember to breathe. It's going to be okay. We're going to talk about Ted Lasso in a minute because you're probably wondering how does he relate to breathing. So we're going to talk about Ted in a minute. Go for a walk. So before you walk in there, I always like to get places a little bit early Maybe do you a little lap around the parking lot. Get out, walk around your car, clear your mind. It's okay, take a moment, take a breath. We're gonna talk about Ted now. I am not a TV fan, but I know people love Ted Lasso. So Ted Lasso does the four, seven, eight technique. 
And he does this, he gets some anxiety attacks, I've been told. He gets nervous before these big soccer games. And so Ted gets through it. And this is what my cousin told me. She said, go and tell people about the Ted te technique before they interview. And I was like, the Ted technique. Okay, so it's 478. And so with that being said, 478, what you would do is empty your lungs. So empty your lungs out. Oh, good. I love having people in here. More people, come, come. Um, breathe quietly through your nose for four seconds. One, two, three, four. And hold your breath for seven. Don't pass out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And exhale, exhale forcefully through your mouth. Put it first, pre pressing your lips together and making a swoosh sound for eight. One, two, four, six, eight. How do y'all feel in the audience? I probably, did, did it calm me down a little? I'm a little anxious too. Okay, so that is, we'll call that the TED technique. So thank you, Ted Lasso. Sometimes a lot of those breathing techniques, those mindful techniques, it can really help you get where you need to go before you walk in that door and before you wow them. Another technique is the stop method. And this is another good one if you don't want to necessarily do the breathing. Um, the S stands for stop what you're doing and focus on your thoughts. So my thoughts may be, I'm about to walk in this room. I'm about to show them I'm the best. I'm about to tell them why I'm the best person for this job. The T stands for take a few deep breaths. Take some time. I'm going to breathe. I'm still thinking those thoughts. I'm the best. I, I know these answers. I'm going to ace this. The O stands for observe. What's going on in your body, your mind, and your emotions, and why you feel that way? Are my hands sweating? Is my eye twitching? My eye twitches when I get nervous. Is my eye twitching? And I starting to sweat. Like, what, what's going on? Let's observe. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm starting to get the hand shake. What's going on? Observe that. Take control of that. And B, proceed with intention to incorporate what you observe during your action. So if I know my eyes twitching or my hands are starting to sweat or I'm playing with them, maybe when I walk in there, I clasp my hands like this to get them under control. Maybe if my eyes twitching, Maybe I try and do a little exercise with it and I try and make it stop. But I'm intentional about what's going on and how to handle that before I walk in that room. So that's the stop method. And the last thing you all before you walk in there is that good old fashioned pep talk. So maybe you're giving yourself the pep talk. Maybe you're calling your significant other, a family member. Maybe you talk to your dog before you left, but you are doing that pep talk and it's not crazy to talk to yourself. Scientifically, it's proven that it's actually a pretty smart thing to do. So tell yourself all the things you need to hear. You're smart, you're qualified for this role. You're going to kill it. You're going to make a difference when you walk in there. They won't want another candidate. And say it out loud because just saying it in your mind doesn't work. You need to hear it. You need to hear yourself say it with confidence just before you walk in there. So we did some breathing. We took a walk. We took a laugh. We did whatever one of those things we just talked about works for you. And now we're in the interview. So here you've made it to the hot seat. You're ready to shine. And there's a ton of things I could tell you about interviewing. I've seen hundreds of interviews over the years. But I really picked the things that I thought were most important. So listen, so many times we don't listen. We're already formulating our next thought before we've even heard the question. You're saying something and I'm not even listening because in my mind, you said enough for me to formulate my thought. Stop it. You do not know what question they're going to ask. Listen to the question. When you answer the question, repeat the question so that you know you under, understood it. I worked at a place one time and we were doing interviews and every, all the questions, super serious, you all, super serious. It got to this one guy. He said, if you were in a, if you could throw a parade for your office, what would it be? What? What did you just what did you just ask me? I'm telling you how great I am and you want to know what kind of parade I'm throwing? And people would sit there, you all like, what? Huh? Listen. Listen to the question. Why did he ask that? To throw you off your game, maybe. Maybe to see what your answer was. Or maybe just so you would calm down and relax. 
But listen, because in your mind, you've already formulated so many answers. I bet you did not prepare with what parade are you going to throw? So with that being said, you was listening, answer the question. You do not, I have sat many, many interviews where one question becomes 15 minutes and people are like drawing on their paper. They're like tapping their foot. They're looking at their watch. Your answers don't have to be long and drawn out. Answer the question. And so when we go over the Sayer method, formally the STAR method, we'll talk about how to answer that question concisely. And so answer the question. You don't have to have tons of stories. You don't have to have tons of examples. You can have one example and the question is answered. Positive body language. So even if you're interviewing online, and I think that's probably a lot of times we notice body language. Um, it can be difficult. And especially if you're in person, we're wearing a mask, we're online, people notice your body language. So make sure um, that you sit up straight, you make eye contact with people, you smile if you're not wearing a mask, you act engaged. You want this job, you want them to see the best you. And if you sit there slumped, don't look at anybody. I'm a hair twirler. I twirl my hair when I get nervous. And if I sat there and twirled my hair, they'd be like, what in the world is this lady doing? Stop it. So have that positive body language. Try not to fidget. Be clear when you talk. Speak loudly. Speak clearly. Try not to say, um, um. And it, that's hard sometimes, right? You get nervous. Hopefully you were breathing before. Try and talk. I would rather you talk slow than rush through what you have to say. So make sure that you're focusing on your eye contact, on if you're fidgety, on how you're saying your words. It makes such a big difference. And I always like to tell people this too. Keep it conversational. These people have already, these interviewers have already looked at your application. You have the skills. You've done what you need to do. You have everything you need. Make it a conversation. Talk back and forth. This isn't a one-sided conversation. And I think that's so important to remember. Um, and see, look, I just said, um, it's so important to remember that you're interviewing them too. Can I fit in on your team? Can I fit in in your culture? Do I fit in with your company? Having a conversation allows you to stay calm. It's like talking to a friend. It's like talking to an acquaintance you met at a networking event. I may not know you, but I'm able to talk back and forth to you. Having a conversation also makes an interview so much easier for everybody in the room than if it's a formal, formal affair. So converse, converse with the interviewers. So we're going to talk about the Sarah method. I wish you all knew how excited I was when I saw this online. Okay. So the Sarah method, when you answer a question, you will forever use this method. When you look at the practice questions you Google online, you will use the Sarah method. Situation, action, result, and application. So let's do the Sarah method right now. An interviewer says to you, can you tell me about a time when you provided great customer service? I'm going to say to you, one time while working with a client, they became upset. They felt like nobody was trying to get to the root of their issue with the problems that they were having. There's our situation, there's our S. To make the situ situation better, I listened to the client and I asked questions to figure out what could be done to help their problem. That's the action. So I listened and I asked them questions about their problem. With the, with the help of them answering their questions, I was able to see that we really dropped the ball for them. And I was able to correct the action that happened with their account. That's the result. They told me what happened. I corrected the issue. I feel that I did a really great job listening to the customer and resolving the issue. The customer was happy and continued using our services. I feel that with my quick thinking and caring attitude that I will be able to bring those skills to your company to improve interactions that are done with your customers. That's the application. That's how I'm bringing it to your company. How am I taking my great customer service skills and bringing them to you? And so that is the Sarah method. I advise everybody, if you use the STAR method, but really the Sarah method, to go online and Google those basic interview questions 
and answer every question like that. Not only if you use that method too, it's going to have that conversation feel. What did I do? What was the situation? What action did I take? What was the result of my action? And then how can I apply that with your company? So that is the Sarah method. I would advise everybody to answer every question like that. And people notice, people notice when you have a structured way of answering things. So let's talk about tough questions, right? They're going to come up and we're seeing a lot of them. So the first tough question, why do you have gaps in your employment? So I'm a talent acquisition consultant and I see a lot of gaps and from a lot of research and what I read now, people are having gaps, but people also aren't staying in employers as long as they once did. And as a recruiter, as a hiring manager, we have to get out of that mindset that people are loyal for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Doesn't happen anymore. People, if they aren't happy, they walk out the door and they find a new company. The job market is hot right now. And if you're if your employees aren't happy, they're leaving. They're walking out the door. And so maybe you aren't staying at jobs as long. Maybe COVID came and you have those gaps in your resume. Be honest. Tell the truth. Tell the person that we simply, during that time, what you did in your interim. Maybe you did freelancing work. Maybe you did consulting work. Maybe I volunteered. Maybe I had a sick family member with COVID who I had to take care of. Maybe honestly, I had to take care of my kids because daycare wasn't open, schools were closed, and I couldn't devote time to work while my kids were running amok in my house and trying to educate them. Be honest. It's okay. People will have a lot more respect for you if you're honest than if you lie about it. There's no need to lie about it. We all just have been going through the same pandemic. We've just all had different experiences with it. So be honest. Did you do freelancing? Did you do consulting? Did you think, I have enough money saved up right now? I'm going to volunteer. Did you take care of a family member? Tell what you have been doing. Be confident and own your story. You did it, it happened, there's nothing wrong with it. And you need to remember that, I believe. Um, talk about what you learned doing those projects. So if you did raise your kids for the year and you did their education and you helped them with school, you don't think there's some transferable skills with helping little people learn at school, at home? There are a ton of skills with that. Did you, were you a caretaker for a family member, for a spouse? There are skills in that. So take those situations and use those skills. Now, something an employer probably doesn't want to hear, I'm going to be super honest, is I did nothing. Went on a couple vacations, laid on the beach, did nothing. The employer probably doesn't want to hear, you did nothing. So hopefully, like all of us, we did something. And just remember, maybe you didn't think watching your kids at home was a big thing or taking care of a family member, but it was a big deal. And it's an important thing. And you can use those skills in those situations when answering those questions. What would you change about your last job? Oh my gosh, there's so many things I could say, right? I didn't like this, this person was a jerk, my boss was this, this happened, they didn't know how to run a company. It's not worth it, you all. It's not worth it to say it. I'm gonna tell you all this too. Do not ever badmouth your previous employer. It seems like common sense, right? Oh, I'm not gonna say anything. People get in that room and it's almost like therapy and you're hearing all kinds of things about somebody's previous employer. You have to remember too, somebody in that room may work, may know somebody who works at that company. Their spouse may work there. Their family member may work there. Here you are trash in that company. It doesn't make you look good. It doesn't make that company look good. It, does, it doesn't do anything for anybody. So my advice when you talk about your, what, what would you change about your last job? You don't badmouth your old employer, but maybe I say, well, the company I was at, the culture didn't align with who I was, so I felt it was best for me to leave, or the technology was a little bit outdated, and it made it hard for me to do my job, so I had to find innovative ways to do it. 
Those are things you can say without saying, my boss was a jerk, I worked all the time, and nobody would leave me alone. So find a more professional way to say it than to badmouth your previous employer. Because if you badmouth them, what will happen if I hire you and you don't like it where you are? What will you say about me? What will you say about this employer? Describe a disagreement you had with your boss or team member. This is another one, too, where people get really amped up and people are like, let me tell you what I think about. Oh, okay. Woo. Calm down. It's, that's not why the question is asked. The question is asked to get insight onto how you solve problems. How do you handle problems? How do you handle other people? I want to see if I'm interviewing you, how you would handle a situation when people don't agree about it. So it's best to share a story where you actively help solve the situation. So the question is right there, and I may say, team member and I didn't agree on how to do a recruiting event, but we both sat down and shared ideas, and we came to a consensus that we would use one idea from each of us to see which one worked best. We applied that in our next career fair, and we found out that my idea was maybe a little bit better. Once again, there's the Sarah method. Of course, my idea would be better. But with that being said, you don't ever want to leave a bad taste. We want to know that you're a problem solver and that you can get results and you can work with different types of people. This is a great one too, right? What is your biggest weakness? We got a lot of them. Um, we all do. Employers ask this question about your weaknesses to see if you have a sense of self-awareness. I've sat in interviews before where people don't have a weakness. <laughs> That's crazy, right? You don't have one weakness, and you do. And maybe you're not self-aware of your weaknesses. And so maybe when we talk about interview prep, that's a question you may want to sit down and think about before you get in a room with interviewers. What are my weaknesses? It's normal to have a weakness, but take that weakness and turn it into a positive. So a weakness I used to have was I could never say no to anybody. I always wanted to help everybody. I wanted to be involved with everything. It hurt my mental health. It hurt me. So I had to start being more selective about what I said yes to, to guard myself and to protect myself. I had to be aware of what was going on so that I was able to have a better quality of life. There's nothing wrong with that type of answer. So those are some other tough questions you may see. If you have other tough questions you want to talk about, definitely put those in the chat. Hopefully I can come up with an answer for you. But those are some of the biggest ones we're going to see. Okay, tips for interviewing online. How many of you interviewed online during COVID? Everybody did. You weren't going anywhere in person. And so we're going to talk a little bit about tips for interviewing online. Okay. Do a test run before the interview. Now, most companies use Zoom. They use Teams. But every once in a while, you get a, you get a company that uses something a little funky, maybe something I've never heard of before. And usually, a lot of times, they'll send those links to you 24 hours in advance, and you can run a test where you can check your audio and your mic. Check them. Make sure they work. There is nothing worse than getting on an interview and people can't hear each other. A lot of times, too, interviews are scheduled back to back to back. So you want to make sure that you have all the time you need to sell yourself, to tell them why you're the best candidate. And you don't want half that time to be used not having the correct equipment set up. Pick a clean, well-lit area. Ooh, you all, we're going to show some pictures next, but having a clean, well-lit area is crucial. You cannot sit in the room that has books falling off the shelf, toys on the ground. It's distracting. I had a coworker do an interview the other day. She said the candidate was great. She did it in her office at work. And she said, I was distracted the whole time. I saw people walking by. I saw this. I saw that. So go to a place and make sure it's well lit and without distractions because distractions is going to be our next thing. So if you're at home, find a room that's the room that you do your interviews in. I also want to say, too, please don't do your interview from your bed. And I can see your bed board behind you because, yes, that has happened as well. Um, it's not necessary. Find a space. Find a place. Um, 
I've seen people do interviews with in cars before. That's distracting to be in a car. Now, I know sometimes maybe you're hiding from your employer. You're doing it on company time. That's between you and your employer. But we got to find a place without distraction. So we want to make sure that we're not sitting in our car. We're not in that cluttered room. We've put our dog up. Our kids aren't running through. Um, one time when I was interviewing during the pandemic, and it was a pretty, it was a pretty well-to-do job. I won't say who it was with. And this, um, this lady's child ran through the interview in their underwear. I'm not making this up to you all. This literally happened. She cannot see him because he is behind her. I see this small child run through in his underwear, and I'm like, I'm in the middle of a question. I can't even answer my question. I've like lost all. And then she's staring at me like I'm having a seizure. And then she turns around and sees this kid and she's like, and she just shuts off her computer and she's like, get out. Please, please don't have your kids running through, your husband running through, your dog barking, your cat. You know, I'm not a cat person, but I know cats jump. You know, with that cat jumping in on your interview, we got to clear the distractions. So really be mindful of that. I know libraries, too, have study rooms you can rent. So if you don't have a place at your house, go rent a study room at the library. Look into that. And I know people work and have interviews. So if you can, schedule your interview before work or after work so that you're able to be in a zone that isn't a distraction. Oh. Always log on early. So in an in-person interview, I would tell you to get there five to 10 minutes early. An online interview, I'm going to tell you to log on early too. People notice. And lastly, sit up and dress properly. I know everybody during the pandemic saw the TikToks, the Instagrams, whatever your choice of social media is. When the person has to get up in the middle of the meeting or the middle of the interview and their interview ready on the top and their leisure wear on the bottom. And so they look super great on the top and they have on basketball shorts. They have on sweatpants. Just, just dress all the way. Just make sure all of you is dressed and put together because you don't know if you're going to have to get up. You don't know what could happen. Dress yourself. Head to toe, dress all the way. So this is what I wanna show you all. So an online room setup. this is what we want. We want a clean room, a clutter-free room, good light coming through. We talked about a well-lit room, not any clutter around. I wish I had that office. I'm not wanting this, okay? I'm not wanting there to be books falling off, papers everywhere crooked pictures, anything that's going to distract me, that's not what I'm trying to have. So once again, the libraries all have study rooms. You may have different centers in your community. You may have a college that has a library study room. Maybe you have a conference room at work you can hide in. Once again, that's between you and your employer, but all types of things like that. So we want this, we don't want that. So I'm gonna finish up real quick here. How to follow up after your interview. Send a thank you. So whoever you've been working with during your interview, send them a thank you within 24 hours. You don't have to get out the pen and paper. You can send an email. Hey, Amanda, thank you so much for letting me have the opportunity to interview today for the alumni relations coordinator position. I really enjoyed my interview, and I feel that I'm the best fit for this position because of X, Y, and Z. If I can provide or answer any other questions further, please let me know. I look forward to hearing from you soon. They may not respond to you. I, I will say as a recruiter, I don't always respond when people say, send me thank yous, but I do get them and I know I've gotten them. A lot of times I interview a lot of people, so I may not have time to respond, but I do notice when they're sent and I do make a note when they are sent. If you haven't heard anything, follow up. One of the questions you should ask at the end of the interview, and a lot of times they'll tell you, is their follow-up. Well, we have three more interviews. We're hoping to be finished by the end of the week. We want to make a decision by next Wednesday. Well, if next Wednesday comes and goes, it closes a business and I haven't heard from you, it's okay to email. It's okay to send them a message. Hey, Amanda, I know you all said you were making a decision in the next week or so. I was just wondering, have you all come to consensus yet? People get sick. People go out of town. People have vacation. So something may have come up. It also shows that you're still interested in the position. Oh, what have I done? Oh, sorry.
Evaluate your performance. A lot of times when I used to leave interviews, I would try to remember the questions that were asked, but I would think, how did I answer that? Did I, did I use the SARA method? Did I, did I stutter a lot? Did I say, uh, uh, um, did I, did I, did I move my hands around? Did I tap my foot? So evaluate your performance, evaluate yourself like you played golf, like you were playing a sport and see what you did great and keep doing it. But if there's something you could do better, do better. Don't put your eggs in one basket. And what I mean by this is remember that nothing is guaranteed when you interview. I walked into so many interviews and thought, I won. I'm the top candidate. I'm the best. I didn't get the job. I went on my job search when I originally left UK for about a year and a half. I went on dozens of interviews. And I thought I was the best. And I probably was sometimes. But sometimes I probably wasn't. And I didn't get the job. Don't put your eggs in one basket. Keep applying, applying, apply, apply. And with that being said, don't ghost other interviews. So maybe I interviewed at UK today and tomorrow I interview at a different college. Don't ghost that college because you put your eggs in one basket at UK or any other company. Always follow through with your interviews. And if you aren't going to follow through with your interview, contact that recruiter, contact that hiring manager. So tips for success. So these are what I deem to be most important. And a lot of it we've already talked about. Remember that you are also interviewing them. Are they a right fit for you? Do they fit in with what you want with your next position? Don't ever badmouth your previous employer. It's not worth it. But you also don't know who else is sitting in the room. Have follow-up questions to ask the interviewers. Two or three questions will suffice, but make sure you always have something. Always have an elevator speech prepared about yourself. That elevator speech should be about 30 minutes, 30 minutes, just kidding, 30 seconds. <laughs> wow, the interview is over. 30 seconds about yourself, what brings you into the job market, a little bit about your education, your previous jobs, why you're here now. I used to have one down pat. I could like recite it in my sleep, it was crazy. Know where you are applying and the position you are applying for. I know Indeed and LinkedIn make it super easy to hit apply here, apply now, and it all sends through. And then that recruiter calls you and you're like, uh, know what you applied for. Keep a little notebook. Keep a list on your phone. Know what you're applying to. Practice sample questions with the Sarah method. So always practice those sample questions before you go in. You may hear some of those questions, you may not, but it makes you more familiar with the interview process. And honestly, just be yourself. There's no need to ever walk into a room and not be the person you are. Because if you aren't yourself and you get that job, not only are you going to be upset with yourself, but the company that hired you is going to work, wonder where was the person they spoke with. So always be yourself when you go on an interview. And so with that being said, are there any questions? Um, we have a question in the chat. Um, this person asks, if the salary is not listed on a job posting, you apply and are called to interview, what is the best way to bring up salary expectations? And she says, I recently went through two rounds of interviews where it was never brought up and I felt uncomfortable asking because another coworker was present in both interviews. Absolutely. So that's a great question. So as a recruiter, I always, when I recruit people and I interview them, I always tell them the salary up front. I always say to them, they'll tell me what their job experience is, why they come to the job market. I say, what is the compensa compensation you're looking for in your next role? For them to tell me what they're looking for. But if I was in an interview, I think at the end, after you've went through it and you have those questions, you could ask, what, what is the compensation you're expecting for this person to receive in this next role, do you have a range? Now, they may not be able to pinpoint it for you, but I would ask for a range. And, and the reason I say to ask, 10 years ago when I was younger, I would have never asked that. You're not supposed to. Who does that? Don't waste anybody's time. Don't waste the interviewer's time, but don't waste your time. So make that one of your questions. If they haven't disclosed that to you, make it one of your questions. Or when you're setting up the interview through email, you can ask in that email to them. 
Hi, I'm very interested in this position with X company. Do you know what the compensation range you're looking to pay this employee? This allows you to know what's going on, not waste your time, not waste their time. That's a great question. All right. content giving her some love in the room in the online group be sure to give your feedback in the chat box there i've seen you got some big kudos already in there sarah so we'll show them to you um i love this sarah method and in relation to how it compares with the star method um and being able to communicate a good story in an interview right thank you so much fantastic job all right, we're going to continue with our program wrapping up today. Employers with active job leads, please make your way to the podium now. I think we have a couple of, or at least one employer guest here. If you're in the online group now, please use the raise hand feature. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Elizabeth with Edward Jones for a one minute spotlight to share active job leads. Hello, <clears throat> my name's Elizabeth. I'm with Edward Jones. Um, I have an opening in my office for a branch office administrator. Um, this is the perfect job when it comes to transferable skills. Um, we are not looking for someone with financial uh, capability. We're looking for someone who can smile, someone who likes to organize, someone who can tell me what to do and keep me on schedule, um, someone who maybe has some social media skills, someone who enjoys doing a little bit of marketing for the branch. So if you have any further interest in this position, uh, it is located um, on Tate's Creek Road in the Shinaway Shopping Center. Just give me a call, 859 269-4800, and I'll be happy to tell you more about it. Thank you. Excellent. And for the online group, we'll have Elizabeth chat with Christy over here and make sure that we put that phone number in the chat for you. Okay, next up, Kim. Hi, my name is Kim Strong, and I'm with Jamberley Franchise Consulting. I am a franchise recruiter. Um, and I represent over 300 different business opportunities for people who are looking at uh, self-employment through franchising. So if you just want to explore, um, it does not cost anything for my services. I'm here to help people who are, are ready to jump into self-employment through franchising. And I can share with you a lot of different ideas and just uh, learn about your strengths and help you find a great fit for business ownership. I am in Kentucky, but I work with people all over the U.S., so it doesn't matter where you are. We can talk on the phone, we can Zoom chat, or meet in person if, in fact, you are in Kentucky. Um, so I'd love to help you if you're ready to um, take that move to business ownership. And what's the Thanks. best way to follow up? Best way to follow up with me is my direct phone number is 502-558-558. 9677. My email is, should I give that or just, okay, it's Kim at jamfranconsult.com. So we'll type that in so you can get the spelling right, but thanks so much. In the chat with Christy, make sure we get that. Okay. Kind of record. All right, excellent. I think that's got us all for in the in-person group. Are there any employers online with their hands up? All right, excellent. For those that are in the, in the room that don't feel comfortable with the podium or online, that's totally fine. Please email us your job leads or if you're an attendee who's job seeking and you know of a great job, um, please email us those by noon today at jobclub at uky.edu and we'll include them in our job club newsletter this afternoon. For those of you that are new to the group, please watch for the email. We spend so, so much time compiling job leads for you. And employers, uh, like these great ladies in the room, uh, are sending us job leads all the time. So we, we do want you to see those job leads and go for them if they're appropriate for you. Okay, um, a few updates from our Job Club Facilitator Group. Uh, Fit County Cooperative Extension has great programming. Be sure to check those online. We'll put the link to that into the chat. Um, no specific updates for that one. Nicole, did you want to share some job leads from Steps? Oh, yeah, come on up.
All righty, you guys. Uh, as you know, Steps Employment is part of our uh, employment team here at the University of Kentucky. We are temporary employment, I should say, uh, here at the University of Kentucky, and many of our positions have the ability to transition into regular positions. Um, so we have several today, and of course, as Amanda already mentioned, we will have these jobs updated um, so that you guys can go and look at them, apply, and uh, also look at other jobs. So we have um, actually two steps, administrative assistant positions, um, screening coordinator positions. We have two of those also, uh, a pediatric forensic nurse, uh, staff assistant, a, uh, let's see here, customer service representative for our Move Well centers here at the University of Kentucky, uh, an IC, IT support tech and specialist, and a work life benefits administrative assistant. And so uh, feel free uh, to, like I said, visit our webpage. There are several other ones, but these are just some key jobs that we're hiring for right now. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me also directly. Uh, the jobs will also be posted on LinkedIn. What's the best way for them to follow up? Oh, thank you. Yeah, so the best way to follow up with me uh, via email or phone number. Uh, my phone number is 859-257-9556. And my email is Nicole, my first name, N-I-C-O-L-E dot weight, W-A-I-T-E, at U-K-Y dot E-D-U. All righty. Thank you, guys. See you again. STEPS is a great way to get connected to UK. Many of us started our careers in STEPS. I did when I first started at UK. Um, and unlike many temporary employment um, situations, it does include insurance. So definitely worth looking at. Okay, alumni career services, quick update from our area. Caroline and I and Queen are accepting new clients. If you're in need of career related support, know that we're here to coach you for interviews, talk about your resume, or if you're looking for a career change and not sure what's next, we offer a great deal of career assessment work. So let us know if you need any support. You can reach us at ukalumni.net, um, ukalumni.net forward slash career or ukalumni career, uky.edu. We'll put that information in the chat too. Okay, next time at Job Club on August the 9th, we'll meet again at Bet County Cooperative Extension or in the online group. You're welcome to join either route. Pathways forward for job seekers. Overcome what's keeping you stressed, struggling, or stuck. Our presenter, Debbie Powell, founder and owner of Breakthrough Consulting, will be the speaker. This is going to be a really good session. We know from our uh, job seekers that the job search is not for the faint of heart. It, it takes a psychological toll on us, and we want to be the best versions of ourselves for our future work. So join us for this session for some great tips, and we hope to see you on August the 9th. On behalf of the Fayette County, uh, Fayette County Cooperative Extension Service, the UK Alumni Association, and UK HR Steps Temporary Employment, thanks for joining Job Club today. See you again. Bye. I owe you everything. <laughs> Was that good? Was